Hey, welcome back. Thanks for clicking on my channel and giving me a chance to wow you with my lovely personality. Just like all the other movie YouTubers, there's like thousands of us. So it's really hard to get subscribers nowadays, but I'm trying. This is Polite Society, and I'm a blind film critic. And this had audio description, and it's on Peacock. And at the top of the film... I had, I had no idea what Polite Society was. The only thing I knew about this film going into it was that it was released theatrically. So it had sort of that, um, that blessing of, we had enough faith in this to release it theatrically. This is not a straight-to-streaming film. We put this in theaters. We marketed it and put this out. And I was like, oh, cool. I looked at the cast and I was like, I have no idea who any of these people are. But I'm excited. And it was... From the very beginning, at first, I was like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what's happening. I thought this was going to be something different. Um, and as the movie developed, I was like, oh my god, it is. This is so different, and I love it. I am so here for it. Even, even if I don't love it, love it, like even if I'm not like, this is the best picture of the year, I am so excited for the fact that people are making movies like this that this exists. And I'm not saying it from like a representation standpoint. I feel like a lot of people uh, are going to look at the cast and they're going to be like, uh, he just, he's saying that because there's brown people in it. I'm not, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. It's, I mean, great, great for them. But there was a whole movie about a very specific culture that uh, is very underrepresented in English language media. Um, but that's not these could be white people and this would be still be interesting this could be a film full of white people and it would still be a really interesting well put together film um i think possibly the fact though that it is uh representative of that culture that it has that sort of vibe that it's a little bit of bollywood influenced and that's why you're getting what you're getting is that you know, maybe you should be watching more Bollywood, and if you watch more Bollywood, this would make more sense to you. But it it reminded me a little bit of Scott Pilgrim versus the World. It was, uh, which is one of the reasons why the only like negative thing that I have to say about the entire film is that uh, I wasn't clear enough on what was real and what was just sort of like a hyper sensitive like overactive imagination it kind of took the whole thing like it was real and that's fine but I don't know if that's what the intention was I mean they literally break into fights where it's like Mortal Kombat where it announces like the two the last names of the two characters and you know uh <laughs> you know how you, you Sub-Zero versus Scorpion fight <laughs> it kind of does that it's it's so absolutely off the rails and I and I can't recommend it more because you won't see anything else like this this year. I, I have a feeling there's nothing else like I haven't seen anything like this in a, a long time. Like I said, the the first thing that came to my mind was Scott Pilgrim versus the world. And that's a that's quite a while ago. I mean I know it's not super old, it's not like I was reminded of Citizen Kane, but you know, wings. <laughs> this movie reminded me of wings. Um, the Great Train Robbery. <laughs> uh, no. Um, but it, it's been a while since there's been something like this. But uh, it features a young girl who has to save her sister from her wedding. And it's so hypersensitive that you don't know if, if any of it's real. And it's so kind of absolutely bad shit <laughs> that you just don't know how is is she imagining it is this a like are we gonna find out at the end she has like a brain tumor like <laughs> i i had no idea where this movie was going um because it's so some of it is just so unbelievable that the, the plot of the film that it wants you to accept i don't want to spoil it i have to dance around it because um i want you to watch it <laughs> The plot of the film that it ends up throwing you uh, into, you just kind of go, what? And you keep waiting for somebody to, to tap you on the shoulder and be like, 
She's imagining it. It's all inside her head. This isn't real. She's actually been in a coma for six months. <laughs> like something like that. I was waiting for some, some weird overactive imagination. You know, like, are you off your meds again? <laughs> you know, <laughs> we got to get your ADHD sister out of here. She's imagining things again, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because the, 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 uh, sort of the villainous plot to this whole thing is so weird. <laughs> it's so bizarre. But then again, so does Scott Pilgrim. When you really look at Scott Pilgrim, it is so weird what he has to go through. And Scott Pilgrim also kind of treats it a little bit like some of that is actually happening. And it's just, but it, it is a little bit more clear that there's maybe some uh, a little bit of imagination being thrown into this here. I don't know that there is any imagination being thrown into any of this here. I think this is all played straightforward. Like, this all happened. This is totally what happened. Um, yes, these people all fought each other. They're all really trained in uh, in combat, and it was fantastic. Uh, the main girl wants to be a, uh, a, a stunt woman, when she grows up, her like her favorite person in the world is like a stunt woman. She she keeps writing to her because she she's like, oh, I idolize you and I want to be like you when I grow up. And she has a YouTube channel where she films herself doing stunt work, um, just like easy sort of like around the house stuff. Uh, nothing, you know, not, not like jumping out of a helicopter or anything like that. But um, just whatever she can pull off, she's trying to amass like a YouTube channel versus. Uh, full of of work that, you know, of different kicks she can do and flips and, and that kind of thing. So um, she's really into that. And then the film kind of embraces this style and it just kind of goes for it. And it's lovely. And I, I wish more people would watch this. I know that people look at this film and they go, I, I don't see any actors who look like me and I don't recognize any of them. And I can't tell you how wrong that would be to write this film off as being just something that was made for East Asian people. Uh, first of all, it's in English, uh, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> um, it's not dubbed, and they don't constantly like break into another language and come back and forth. It's just in English. Uh, so it is it is made for uh, the Western audience, I guess you could say. And it's, it, it, you'd be missing out on so much, on so much fun. Um, uh, and it's, I, the performances were good. I enjoyed it. It's a lot of, it's a lot of fun. It's enjoyable. Um, I think there are people out there who, for some reason, they don't like strong female leads. This would be a turnoff to them uh, because there really is no need for men in this film. Uh, and like the arguably the largest male character in the film is not presented as a good guy so uh, it's yeah it's probably uh, but you know it's it's also women fighting women too so it's it's a very interesting film and i think you i think people should give it a shot the audio description was really pretty good it did a good job of focusing primarily on the action sequences, which is where this film kind of lives and, and thrives. And then sort of the the stylized, um, the, the specific way that this film is stylized around those action sequences. Uh, the stuff that it doesn't focus on as much, there is quite a bit of dialogue. It's not your typical action movie like John Wick, where people just fight for 20 minutes without saying a word. It's also not that. There's plenty of dialogue in this, which makes audio description kind of an uphill battle. Um, and I suppose you could say that you want more representation in the dialogue about maybe costuming, especially considering there's a large chunk of it that takes place at a wedding. So you know people get, they're gonna be they're gonna be dressed to the nines uh, for that for that wedding. And uh, I kind of felt like. That, but that's not the focus of the film. The, fo the focus of the film is not fashion. It's not, oh, what are you... I'm sorry, who are you wearing before I fight you? I need to know. Who is this? Is this Gucci? <laughs> like, it's just not... Like, it's not what the film is about. Um, 
and there's like a there's a little dance sequence that goes on, but the dance sequence is not the focus. As some Bollywood films, when they break out into a dance sequence, it becomes the uh, becomes the whole focus of the film. Like that is like everything stops, and they have a dance sequence. This one kind of has a dance sequence that's happening while something else is happening, so it kind of cuts back and forth. Um, so the fact that it doesn't over describe the dance sequence is really because the dance sequence is not meant to be the focus of that scene. So I get why certain things were not the focus, but I also can understand why some people may want to know more about those things because they're probably pretty cool visually. I'm sure that, that uh, you know, they looked cool when you could see them. They were little, these little fleeting moments of things that looked cool. But honestly, the action sequences are, are what, you, what you would want because there's quite a few of them. And uh, I thought they were all pretty well described Especially considering um, our main girl can actually do some interesting things. She doesn't just punch. She can actually sort of do all these like bicycle kicks and, and everything. So it has to describe very specifically uh, what she's doing and uh, how she's fighting. So I definitely give it at least a uh, passing grade on audio description. I thought the audio description was fine. And... I think the movie is adorable. <laughs> I think the movie is awesome. And I love when people just take a risk. Uh, I, I'd like to thank studio executives when they, when they green light films like this and they give films like this money. The people who produce films like this, when no one's making them, when it's kind of a risk, when it feels like, do we make a film like this? What do we do? Um, do we, is there, is there an audience for this? But they do it anyway because it's so, it feels so different than what's happening. Uh, I think that's so important, because otherwise we're just going to get tons of films that feel like John Wick and Taken, you know? Uh, this doesn't feel like that at all. This feels very different. But I think would also satisfy a lot of those people who watch that style of film. But it's also kind of quirky and funny, and it, it has broad appeal to it. I, I don't know. I was really surprised by this, and I knew nothing about it going into it. So hopefully I haven't ruined anything for you, because I think going into it, no as little as humanly possible, and I think, you know, I think you'll just be surprised by it. So um, it's delightful. Uh, like I said, the, my only qualm is I never really got a firm answer as to whether or not <laughs> this film was going with the because right now I'm left with the idea of all of that really happened. Because there was never really an answer otherwise that was like, no. Um, she just has an overactive imagination. It never really gave me a conclusion on, uh, like, a finality on that answer. So because of that, it's like the one thing that I wanted the most was to know, is this happening truly as, as we're being presented it? Or is it, is, is it exaggerated? And I feel like that answer maybe was given to me, and maybe that's why there was no answer at the, at the end, is because it is supposed to be that that ha actually happens the way that it does. But that, I don't know, it's just so weird. Anyway, uh, I'm going to give Polite Society an A-. Um, it may be uh, one of those ones where at the end of the year I'm, it's on the higher end of my A-. Um, but I did just want a little bit more clarity. Uh, it would have been nice, um, maybe to have more perspective from other characters instead of having one female lead. Uh, at, what, at some point in time, she does have some other friends and I feel like they don't necessarily all experience the same things, um, as her. Perhaps if one of her friends had had a similar experience, if there was a fight that didn't include the main girl and included supporting uh, players, that would have been um, an answer as to, is this, uh, is this presented truthfully? And as, as this the universe we live in? Um, because if other people were experiencing it other than her, then obviously this is just the universe they live in um 
but since she's in every single weird ass fight it's just makes me wonder so anyway thanks for watching thanks for subscribing i also have a website macmovieguy.com you can follow me on instagram or twitter at macmovieguy you can go to the audio description project adp.acb.org it'll let you know what is audio description where you can watch it and you can go to the adna.org that's the adna.org it'll let you know who is narrating your favorite films and television series that's it for me today i hope you watch this and, and i'll watch something else and review it and see you guys on the other side